If you want me to continue with my work, it is crucial to support the channel via Patreon. Moreover, make sure to subscribe to Bobby's Perspective on Rumble. All the links are in the description box below. May Allah bless you all. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, we have a new revert to Islam. It is Tom J. Defile. I presume the man has a French background. And the video is titled How the Nightclub Turned Me Into a Muslim. So I haven't watched the video yet, but the title made me very curious. I personally haven't been to nightclubs in 10 years or so, but I understand that it can be a motivator in people to return to God. Because when you're in such a concentrated alcohol and drug-fueled environment, you can very clearly see what is wrong with people. And that in turn can truly open your eyes, seeing all of that wrong and starting to seek the good, i.e. God. Guys, before we jump into the video, as always, if you enjoy my content, Content, leave me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and if you want to further support my work over here check out the links in the description box below and now with no further ado let's have a look when you turn to Google and search for the fastest growing religion you will find Islam topping the charge as of speaking today almost a quarter of the world's population identify as by the accent he might be well, Belgian at the same time is the religion that has been denigrated the most by the media because it's the That's only it. religion that acts like the mafia that will f kill you. Those Isn't two that guys. Strange? <laughs> On every corner of the internet, you see people converting to Islam, as well as big influential people and entrepreneurs sharing their stories. People like Andrew Tate. I believe that Islam is beautiful, and I think it has the solutions to a lot of the problems we're facing in the world today. Or, Former or Dutch problems. politician Joram van Klaveren. I decided to write an anti-Islam book and it ended up me becoming a Muslim. <laughs> Elfie Best. And I genuinely felt something in the mosque that I've never felt anywhere. What a beautiful community, what a beautiful and simple religion. So aside from Alfie, all the other reverts were bold. I see a connection there. That being said, I truly resonate with what Alfie said there. The beauty, the simplicity of Islam. That was my feeling as well when I went to a mosque for the very first time in my life for prayer. It was in Koh Samui, Thailand, a beautiful mosque next to the beach. And growing up as a Christian with this hatred for Islam, I was expecting God knows what in those mosques, especially visiting churches. You have a lot of mysticism within those churches, a lot of darkness, a lot of sense, a lot of chanting, a lot of gold, very ritualistic behavior. However, when I entered the mosque, it was just a bunch of children and a bunch of men praying that's it at first it was even underwhelming for me because i was expecting so much but ultimately we just lined up everybody was facing the same direction even the imam and that was super crazy to me because the priest usually preaches to you and you have to eat the bread that he puts into your mouth and drink the wine etc etc you name it but here we just all faced the same direction and prayed to god that is it and after that i had the clearest realization ever i just understood yes this is what worship to god should look like just a bunch of men praying to God, praying to their creator. Nothing added to it, no man-made concepts. And this list goes on. Every year we see an increasing number of Muslims in the population of non-Muslim countries. But how? Today I'm sharing a That's personal a well story video. on how this turned me into this. And yes, it's a slightly different video than what you're used to see from me on this channel. Normally, I just speak about entrepreneurship, mindset, and my business journey. This is another fascinating factor. He says that he comes from a business perspective and many people that are into business entrepreneurship find their way to Islam. Why is that so? Because they find the discipline within Islam. They identify the discipline within Islam. And if you want to be successful in anything in your life, you need discipline. I come from a bodybuilding background. I know nowadays you can't really tell anymore. I got old and out of shape. But back in the day, I really used to be into bodybuilding. And how did I transform? 
transform myself. I started with 60 kilograms. I was such a skinny teenager and I ballooned up to 120 kilograms. How did I do it? Did it just happen overnight? Did it happen randomly? Of course not. It was a plan implied. Every single day I would eat eight meals of rice, chicken, broccoli, oats, protein powder, etc, etc. And I would have a workout regime five days per week cardio every morning. I had a fixed plan on what I wanted to accomplish. Did I want to gain weight? So I would amplify the calories. Do I want to lose weight? I would cut the calories. Everything was planned. Everything was accounted for. And seeing how it transformed my body, I understood that without a plan, without discipline, you won't accomplish it. It is that simple. There is this old saying, if you want to sail with a boat, you need a map. Otherwise, the boat will just go into the direction of of the wind and ultimately not make it anywhere. You always need a direction in life. And when it comes down to religion, we've been fed the lie that it is kind of vague. Right? If you look into Buddhism, it's super vague. If you look into Christianity as well, because Christianity claims pray without ceasing. Yeah, what does that even mean? Just pray non-stop, pray 24 hours, pray twice per day, pray 100 times per day. Who knows? In Islam, you clearly know there are five prayers per day. Now, if you do not accomplish it, at least you understand where you fell short. You get it. Ah, okay, five is the goal. Five should be the norm, but I only did four. Aha, uh -huh. this is my shortcoming. You have clear, strict rules. Moreover, again, super clear, halal and haram. There is no vague concept within Islam. You surely know what is right and what is wrong. And if we're talking about salvation, we're talking about your way into paradise, we're talking about God and you, your relationship. Should it be super vague? Should it be guesswork all the time? If it is really guesswork that we are looking for, then we wouldn't look for a religion in the first place. Then I would say I'm agnostic or I'm a deist or something on those lines. Why would I identify with Christianity or Buddhism if it doesn't give me a clear structure, if it doesn't give me a plan to follow? If you address me and you ask me, hey, Bobby, can you give me a meal plan? Can you give me a trainings plan, a workout plan? Then I will give you a plan. I'm not going to tell you, yeah, well, man, just train three times or four times or twice or just train how you feel, right? Eat whatever feels good to you. If you do that, you're following your desires. And if you would do that, you wouldn't succeed. Man, if I would follow my desires, I would probably never go to the gym. I would probably never eat healthy. I would just lay on the couch and eat crap. People need structure. Structure and discipline leads you to success. Why would it be any different in religion? This topic deserves some time because, yes, I converted to Islam. Alhamdulillah. But let's rewind and start at the beginning of my journey. I grew up like a normal kid in a normal household. Normal parents Whatever with a normal means. income, a mother, a father, and a sister. But when I was seven years old, things changed. My parents got divorced. I didn't see my father a lot. My mother had a really That's hard time managing the situation financially, emotionally. It wasn't easy as a boy of just seven years old seeing this. As a kid you need growing your up, I went through very impulsive and unwise periods not making the right decision, hanging out with the wrong people, alcohol at a young age. You could argue that I didn't have the best or most common childhood, but it was necessary to become the man that I am today. Because struggle makes a man, you learn by experience. And luckily, I have a great family that supports me, cares about me, loves me. And after all, I still managed to have a very strong bond with my father. Very good. And man. therefore, I Thank now God. say Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, meaning praise be to God. But how did this happen? Why does this white guy speak Arabic and talk about Islam? Well, good question. In my younger years, I would never ever thought I would become a Muslim one day. But when looking back at my journey, it makes a lot of sense. At 15, 16 years old, I started to turn my emotions and negative experiences slowly into my motivation. I started building my future self. I started reading books, listening to podcasts, going to the gym more often, waking up early, etc. etc. I became a lot more conscious of the impact of the bad habits I developed during my younger years. I knew that if I didn't change these habits, my future wouldn't change either. 
and you have to take during control. this change my group of friends started to become smaller and smaller some of them thought it was really weird what i was doing but i didn't really care because i had this dream in my mind i became obsessed with growing learning and developing myself while my group of friends started to become smaller a few friends never left and someday somebody asked me did you notice that almost all of your friends you have left are muslim why is that so i started thinking and i was like yeah you're right why is that but the answer was very simple at that age my muslim friends were the only ones not drinking not partying and while all of the other boys in school were talking about how many girls they had my friends were talking about the universe and the meaning of life. That is very beautiful to hear. Unfortunately, I didn't have the same experience in Germany growing up. I said it multiple times here on the channel. Most of my Muslim friends were actually the ones involved in partying, drugs, girls, etc. This is why I had a very, very bad image of Islam. It is beautiful to see that he was surrounded by real Muslims. That stick to their religion are one of the most disciplined people I've ever seen. Exactly right. I just felt really inspired with these people around me. And I never really considered myself an atheist. I always had the feeling that there had to be more than what we can see with our own eyes. I mean, sometimes I just couldn't sleep when I was thinking about how incredibly used the universe around us is. Just think about it. Most of us live their day-to-day life, working, eating, sleeping, but when you take a moment to really think Just about it, urges. whether you're a Animalistic Muslim, urges. Christian, an atheist, it's incredible. The skill of the universe, the oceans, the jungles, the animals, big, small. How did this all came to place? And what are we? What is the meaning of life? So even with there this Muslim no friends meaning. around me, Everything in came the beginning out of my nothing. interest was not big really bang. focused on the religion oh. itself. It was more their way of life, the brotherhood, the love and respect that slowly shifted my focus to the religion that instilled these traits in them. Still without the idea of thinking I would ever become a Muslim. And this was because I always had the idea that religion was like an old fairy tale that already was disproven True. by science. Yes, and this is the lie of modernity, of course. Why would you follow something that is thousands of years old? Follow science. Science is the brand new revelation, the newest testament, so to speak, of course. However, if you look into human history, the majority of time, of course, we believed in religion. However, in this day and age, they tell you that the time of religion is over. However, my parents, they are from the Balkans and on the Balkans we had communism so that experiment of removing religion altogether from people has utterly failed people of course have returned to religion again so how can that be if religion is really this old concept that nobody needs how come then that throughout the ages every time religion gets removed people return to religion even stronger so in the aftermath so ultimately, it is the failure of the modernistic, atheistic, secular mind to believe that those are old fairy tales and there is no value in them. Moreover, the further you look into Islamic sciences, you will find out a very congruent argument, of course, for the existence of God. The more I started digging into it, the more I realized I was completely wrong. So first of all, God, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we Muslims call it, is not just a man sitting somewhere in the clouds with a yep. magic wand. It's an indescribable force, the singular and all compassing power behind the creation what we see around us. Yes, very important point, because if you look into modern day atheists, the argument, the straw man they're building is always, ha, I don't believe in a sky daddy. But hey, kudos, dear atheist, Christianity lets it appear like that. They're talking about the father in the sky, and therefore this is not far off from the description sky daddy. However, this is not what Allah is. We're speaking about the creative force behind everything. And science Science proves that even the chair that I'm sitting on right now is made of enormously small and fast moving atoms. This is called yep. quantum mechanics. And if these yep. electronics in it would stop moving, atoms would become unstable and I would not be able to sit on this chair. But what is the thing that makes these atoms move and stay in its position? You see, Science. what is this force? Evolution. But I'll not dive too deep into this since this video is meant to share my experience, not to convince you. So long story short, for every question I asked, 
I received a powerful answer when digging more into Islam. And when people nowadays ask me why I became more religious, I always say two reasons. One, for the rules and the way of living in this worldly life. We call it dunya in Arabic. Yes, dear Tom, and this shows your disciplined mind. This shows why you are into entrepreneurship. You actually want rules for life. It is quite funny because there are books called Rules for Life, right? Such books written by our beloved Jordan Peterson that cannot answer the question if he believes in God or not. What do you mean? But people will gobble up that information, right? Oh, Dr. Jordan Peterson wrote that book. Let me follow those 12 rules for life right now. But if you say you want to follow the Sharia, you want to follow follow rules for life you are an extremist of course the point of the story is this young man here understood the value of implementing rules in your life if you don't implement rules into your life somebody else will if you don't have a plan for your life somebody else has and two the hereafter called Ahira. so let's start with the second one all life is a test this is something we can't argue about it doesn't matter if you want to become the greatest sportsman alive or just live a normal, safe life. We all have to deal with negative experiences. We all have to deal with our emotions, our desires. We will lose people we care about, natural disasters, and so on. We all strive for an abundant life, yet one out of 10 people have a burnout. 90% of the adults are too stressed. So whatever you do, you will never be 100% satisfied with this life because you will be constantly tested. I mean, if you're lucky, you will live 70, maybe 80 years on this planet. It's gone before you know, it's a matter of time and your clock is ticking, so do mine. Alright guys, and this is it for today's video. Due to YouTube rules imposed onto my digital life over here, I cannot react to the whole video. So if you want to check out the video in its entirety, head to the channel Tom J. Defile, and there you can find his video How the Nightclub Turned Me Into a Muslim, and many other videos about self-improvement, sport, and business. During his speech, I consistently had to think about the Adhan, the call to prayer. Come to prayer, come to success. This was so extremely powerful to me once I understood understood it. The religion calls you to success. This of course implies that if you adhere to the prayer amongst other things, you will be amongst the successful. And this is something, as I said throughout the video, that the disciplined mind can resonate with. The atheistic mind is all about pleasure. They do not care about the judgment. They do not care about an afterlife. They think that this is all there is. And moreover, they believe that we are evolved monkeys. So if we are evolved monkeys, everything is based upon nothing. We sprung into existence out of a big bang. Now we are here after millions and billions of years of evolution, survival of the fittest. The strongest monkey gets the woman. The strongest monkey gets to eat. What is there really to be concerned about? At the same time, atheists pose as very, very ethical and compassionate people. Who cares, man? You're just an evolved monkey with clothes. You might as well run around naked. The atheistic mind is a lazy mind that does not further investigate into what this existence truly is and moreover they of course do not see it as a test so therefore yet again they follow their desires because as long as it feels good it must be right this is the declaration of human rights in a nutshell of course you can do whatever you want as long as you do not hurt anybody and out of that we have many ideologies that i cannot name here coming into existence of course and this is because people simply care about their pleasure if you want to have sex and not create children just use a condom and jump from partner to partner have as much sex as you like without any responsibility this is what it boils down to this is what people love and moreover this is what pop culture pushes on to them you want to eat food no order a burger with uber eats you want to have a meaningful relationship forget about it rather go on tinder and hook up with the next best person don't you see it is all about convenience and this is what islam stands in opposition to. Islam means discipline. The atheist hates discipline. And I'm going to make the argument that most Christians nowadays hate discipline as well. The Christians abandon the law. The Christians can follow basically what they like within their liberal, secular governments. And don't get it twisted, Christianity led to secularism in the first place. A separation of church and state.
And this is where we see millionaires and billionaires reverting to Islam. They technically do not need anything, right? They have everything they need. Why would they need to change their religion for an extra benefit? No, it is because they identified a pattern, a pattern that makes you successful in life. And why would it be any different in religion? Why wouldn't there be a pattern that you can follow to be successful in this life and the hereafter? The successful mind identifies the true religion as Islam. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to further support this channel via Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.